one of the biggest problems that students have who struggle with algebra is that they mix up the rules. You know, they don't know, am I supposed to be finding X or am I supposed to be putting these numbers together or what am I supposed to be doing? They get really confused. And so the key to not getting confused there is to know the difference between simplifying versus solving. So we've got Nicole here with us who was struggling with this, like many, many GED students do. Probably maybe this is one of the biggest algebra struggles that I find. And we are going to today really hone down in on this. How do I know when I'm simplifying and how do I know when I'm solving? There's two totally separate games we play in the world of algebra. I'm going to use a Venn diagram to compare and contrast. I love you know, preparing for more than one GED test at a time. And a lot of times on your science and your social studies and your language arts test, they'll have you populate a Venn diagram to compare text. Well, I'm going to use this Venn diagram here to compare simplifying and solving, the two things that we mainly do in algebra. Okay, so simplifying, I have this leftmost circle here, and solving will be the right, and I wanna compare them. I wanna talk about the way they're similar. So I'm gonna put anything that they have in common in that common shared space. That's where I'm gonna compare, I'm gonna talk about where they're similar. Then I'm gonna look at their differences, and the way that they're different, that's I'm gonna put in the outsides of the circles there, the part that they don't share, and that's where we'll contrast. We'll talk about the differences between simplifying and solving. Okay. So I just said that simplifying is obeying the symbol. It's doing what the operations tell you to do. It's, now in math words, I often call this performing the indicated operation. And of course, what I mean by the indicated operation is I'm looking at the signs and symbols and I'm doing whatever they tell me to do. So I'll give you a great example. I'm just gonna come out here uh, to work an example here. Like if you saw this written down, you would be a good obedient math student and you would probably simplify. You guys are real used to simplifying. So if I tell you, I say, Nicole, what is six plus five? You probably wouldn't say something deep to me like, hey, six plus five is the same as three plus eight. No, your head would automatically go towards simplifying, adding those two numbers obeying the operation symbol that you see. So right there, I just simplify. Now, we can simplify in arithmetic, that's an arithmetic problem, but we can also simplify in algebra. It totally happens. Like for example, uh, Nicole was working on combining like terms. This says two X plus four X. I know how to add those things. Those things are like, so I could simplify this. I could combine these like terms. I could do the addition. Nicole, you learned that when you have two X's and you get four more X's and you put them together, you'll have a total of six X's. Six X's. You just simplified. Okay, these things that you're simplifying, GED students tend to call them problems, right? You guys look at something like this, or something like this, and you go, oh, look, it's a problem. Um, sorry, y'all, that's not a technical math word. <laughs> Mathematicians don't call those problems. We call those expressions. We simplify expressions. So let's put that in our simplifying box. When you see an expression, what we generally do, unless we're told otherwise, is just obey those little symbols and do what they tell us to do. So then what is solving? What, when does solving come up? And it's not your fault that you're super confused about the word solving. It is actually the fault of many teachers who use this word improperly. A lot of, I even saw, a, I won't name which big GED publisher did it, but I saw a GED publisher tell students on a problem like this one, uh, that I wrote up here, um, you know, they said solve 2x plus 4x and I wanted to cry. I wanted to cry, cuss out the publisher and write a letter of complaint. I didn't because I don't have a lot of free time, but I wanted to because that's not solving. What did we just say we were doing on these two? When I combined 2x and 4x, simplifying. So we weren't solving, we were simplifying. Okay, so then what does it mean to solve? What does it mean to solve? First of all, you should know um, that to solve, so I'll title this circle over here, solve. Solving, on the other hand, does not mean perform the indicated operation. Just do what you're told and be obedient, Nicole. No. Um, solving means to find a value for the unknown. Now in algebra, what do we use for unknown things? A letter. 
A letter, yeah. So it means to find a value for the unknown, the letter, the variable, I well, want to use math words, that makes the equation or the, the statement, I should say, because there's more than just equations. If we are looking for a value for the unknown that makes a statement true. A statement, notice I said a statement. Six plus five is not a statement. Six plus five is like saying dog. It's just a thing floating out there. It's not a statement. It doesn't claim anything about the dog. What is a statement? A statement has to make a claim. Even in math, there's a claim, something that you could prove true or false. So for example, here is a statement. Now I've stated something. I just told you six plus five equals nine. This has a claim to it. You could determine if this was true or false, couldn't you? Yeah, is it true or false, Nicole? Okay, so that is a statement. Notice the equal sign. An expression alone is just like an English phrase. It's just like throwing out a noun, like pumpkins. I didn't say anything about pumpkins. There's just pumpkins out there, you know, and there might be some pumpkins over here and some pumpkins over there, but it's still just pumpkins. I haven't said anything about them. Now, if I want to make a statement, a pumpkin is orange, I need a verb. We use a verb in English to do that. Same thing in math. We have math verbs. And the first one I'd like to introduce you to is the equal sign. The equal sign makes a statement. It says the left-hand side is equal or equivalent to the right-hand side. What I need you to notice, I need you to notice a couple of things. First of all, I need you to notice that on this side here, on this left-hand side of this equation that I just wrote, this is an expression. It's, you know, some combination of numbers and operations. Now, whether you like it or not, this is also an expression, a super boring expression, but it's just a thing out there. It's just a number nine. So when I look at this thing, I have two expressions that are separated by an equal sign. Let's go ahead and label. So there's an expression. And then in between those two expressions, you're going to see that I have this idea of equivalence, uh, an equal sign. I have two equivalent expressions. That is what's known as an equation. An equation has two equivalent expressions. And Nicole, equations are what we can solve. We can only simplify expressions, but we can solve equations. So Nicole told me that she was struggling. Don't feel bad, Nicole. A lot of people have this struggle. That's why I wanted to make this video. Nicole told me she was struggling. She was looking at these algebra things and she would look at them and she would say, oh my gosh, do I simplify or do I solve? What time is it? And the key to that is, am I looking at an expression? You can simplify an expression. Or am I looking at a statement, an equation that I could solve? Now, I need you to see that. Let me circle them so I can be clear here. We wrote a couple of expressions, 6 plus 5 and 2x plus 4x. We've only wrote one equation. It's a boring equation. It wasn't even a true equation. Let's write a couple more equations uh, so we have a few in our wheelhouse. I could say something like 6x is equal to 18. Now that's more of an interesting equation because it makes a statement. I'm saying it's true that 6x is equal to 18, but it also has some mystery to it. Like I could actually here find out what x would have to be in order to make this true. When I say 6x is equal to 18, I'm saying there's a number. A number exists that if I multiply it by 6, I will get 18. So you could not solve, girl, because you did not have an equal sign. You could not find x. How would you know? You had no relationship. Uh, you had no statement to discern if it was true or false. Okay, but I could solve something like this, 6x plus 18, even though I couldn't solve something like this up here, 2x plus 4x. Okay, so I said we can simplify expressions, but we solve equations. I also said that when you're simplifying, you obey the symbols. We said that, right? Right here. We said when simplifying, we were going to obey the symbols. So, but when we're solving, like, look at, look, at, take a look at 6x equals 18. I couldn't obey the operands if I wanted to. I cannot multiply together 6 and x. I mean, there's no symbol there, but I know when they're shoved together, they're supposed to be multiplying. How could I multiply 6 and x? I can't. And so what I do instead is I do the do you know what I would do to solve 6x is equal to 18? The opposite? Yes. You use inverse operations. Yeah. And what's our goal? Our goal in this case is we're working to get the letter alone. We're trying to isolate the variable. Well, girl, you can only isolate something, get something alone, 
if there's a place to get it alone too, notice that these expressions that we looked at, like six plus five, there's no equal sign. It's not two-sided. It's just one expression. Or two X plus four X, it's not two-sided. There's just one expression. There's no way to get a letter alone. Whereas here, six X equals 18, I could move that six away so that X was alone on its side of the equal sign. When I say get it alone, I mean get it by itself on one side of an equal sign. So let's compare and contrast that. One of them's two-sided and one of them is one-sided, okay? This is just one thing, one-sided as I sometimes call it, but that's a little weird to think about something just having one side. So this is one thing, one expression. Whereas this is two, at least two-sided. It's two equivalent expressions. Now, of course, we know that the expressions and equations have lots in common. They all have numbers, okay? We see numbers. What else do they have in common? Expression. Yeah, you're right. An expression is just one an expression, but an equation has two expressions, so there's expressions involved in both of them. That's true. Okay, what else do they have in common when you just like look at them? An answer. An, oh, an answer. Okay, that's interesting. I'm gonna come down at the bottom because uh, I want to talk about what kind of answers we get in each case. Because yes, they absolutely do both get uh, what students commonly call an answer. But I want you to notice that their answers take different form. So let's look up here. I'm going to get my spotlight again. Do you see my six plus five we were working with? Mm -hmm. When I did six plus five, I got an answer of 11. Oh. Notice that I started with one thing. I ended with one thing. I answered using an expression. Expression, expression. My answer was an expression. Let's look at the other side though. We didn't solve this equation yet. So let's take a look at the little equation we had down here. Tell me, if I wanted to solve this, if I wanted to work to get x alone, what would I do, Nicole? You would have to divide six by itself, which would cancel each other out. Yeah, I'd have to divide, and I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to the other side. Both sides. So once again, we have that idea that simplifying is one-sided. I only did the work once, but solving is two-sided. Whatever changes you make, you make to both sides. Now, let's see what happens. On this side, multiplying and dividing by six will cancel. That's why she did that. And so I'll be left with just my x. And then on the other side, there's the math to do. 18 divided by six is, of course, three. And look at the way I write my answer. I started with an equation. X is equal to something. So many x is equal to something. I end with an equation. X is equal to three. And so even though they both have an answer, their answers take different forms. When I simplify an expression, my answer is an expression. When I solve an equation, my answer is an equation. I'm making a statement. Again, it can be tested for truth. X would have to be three, and you could test that for truth. Does X, would X really be three? Uh, does that work to make six X be 18? Well, yeah, it sure does. If I turned X into three, six times three is 18. So we see they have numbers in common, they have expressions in common, they have answers in common. What other things do you notice here? Like besides numbers, what else do you see? that are both in these expressions and in these equations. I'm gonna write another an equation too. Here's another one. That they're equal to something? Okay, I definitely have equal signs here, but notice it's just one-sided. And the equal sign here is two-sided. I have something on both sides of the equal sign. So yeah, an equal sign could show up in either. So the real distinguishing mark is not so much the equal sign so much as if they're one-sided or two-sided. Do you notice anything else in common? I'm just gonna go ahead and put operation. Okay. We have operations on both of them. So like there's addition up here. And there's addition down there. So I'm going to see operation symbols. Um, I do also want you to see that there are variables in common. Sometimes students think as soon as they see X, it's time to start solving. That was the struggle you were running into. But I mean, you can notice right here, this was an expression. I couldn't solve it. I couldn't figure out what X was equal to. All I could do was do the math I knew how to do. Well, I can combine 2x and 4x and say whatever x is, there's six of him. But he's a mystery number. He remained a mystery number. I will never for the rest of my life, I cannot figure out what x is unless somebody tells me or I have a statement. But without a, st I don't have the power to discern this mystery. All I know is that there's six of this mysterious number x floating around somewhere. So I can't solve it. I can't figure out what x is supposed to be, but I can simplify it. I can do whatever work I can do. But down here, x plus 5 equals 19. Now I have the power to solve because it's two-sided 
I could figure out what X would have to be. By getting him alone, getting all the numbers together, I can figure out what number X would have to be to make this true. Okay, so this is my little comparison of simplifying versus solving. And I wanna try some example problems to get you to learn to visually distinguish. I cannot wait to put this up in the virtual GED class. We have been needing this distinguishing for a while and I've had it on my to-do list for over a year. Can I ask a question? Yes, ask all the questions. You, you ask good ones. Where do people actually do 2X plus 4X and not wanna know where X? Why do we have the two types of different questions of? Um, usually it's when I'm using X for any number. So I try to make rules like I'll go to do some math modeling. I'll start combining things that I don't know yet, but I'm trying to make like they're always true. So let me think of an example that would make sense to you. Okay, so business. You know, I deal with profits and loss in business all the time. So mm -hmm. I can look at my business and I can see like the cost of producing a couch. Maybe I'm a couch maker. You and I know that depending on how many couches I sell, that's going to change. So I might mm -hmm. not know yet how many couches I'm going to sell. So I have, I might have this mathematical relationship that I know that describes the cost of producing a sofa. And it's going to be just in terms of S, some unknown number of sofas, because I don't know how many I sold yet. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I have lots of relationships with S. I can look at the cost of a sofa. I can look at how much I make per sofa. I can look at how many sofas my, um, company can produce. So I could have lots of different expressions that use this letter S. And I can put them together in various ways to learn various things. And they do that in the world of business quite a bit. This is one of the ways we'll use algebra in business. So they'll put together like the profit function with the cost function to make something more complex. So you might have some number of S's with some other number of S's and you have to put them together. You don't know how many sofas there are yet, but you know the relationships between these things. And so that would work for me to be able to figure out and with any number of sofas. I could plug later, after I figured out the relationship, I could plug in three sofas and see how much money I'm losing or 3,000 sofas and see how much money I'm making. And it's all because I could work with these S's before I knew what they were. Okay. So you would never change. As long as you were talking about a sofa, you would always use the letter S. If you I went probably to would. Google. It was just a choice for me so that S had more meaning for me. I mean, I suppose I could cho choose C for couches, but every time I talked about the same thing, I would use the same letter. So that's why I know if I have two X's over here, I got two sofas and four X's over there, I got four sofas. So now I have a total of six sofas. Now that X probably stands for cost of the sofa or number of sofas or something. But until I know what it is, at least until then, there's six of that number. Gotcha. Okay. Is that weird to think about? No, I just didn't stand if it was just like math wanting to just be, be math, math and say, we're just going to put, yeah, we're just going to throw X's past numbers and it's going to be addition and just I didn't know if the real world used that. <laughs> yeah, the X is some number. It's some unknown number, or like I said, it could stand in for any number. So that X might be 100 sofas. I don't know what it is yet because I haven't sold them yet, but at least I can do the math with it into, you know, and figure out all my different formulas. You can use those formulas to draw pictures. We can draw graphs with them. We can look at that graph and see where my break even point is. I mean, there's a lot of um, extensions of this. It's just right now we're isolating one skill at a time so you can practice it. So it's hard because you're saying, where am I going to go with this? I'm saying, we're going to put a lot of skills together. So you're probably thinking, oh, shoot. And I'm like, but it's okay, Nicole. We'll practice them one at a time first. So what were we going to do? Oh, I was going to show you a bunch so you could tell me if it was an equation or an expression because that's the way to know if I can simplify or if I can solve. Nicole asked a great question when we first started this. I don't remember if it was when we were on video or not, but she asked me, will they always have directions that tell you what to do? And that's nice when they do. They very frequently will say things like solve this equation or simplify this expression. And if that's the case, you won't have to do a visual differentiation between this. But what if they don't give you directions? How can we tell by the symbols? So that's what we're going to practice right now. Or sometimes, most commonly happens on the GED, there's problems that are so complex complex that they involve both simplifying and solving. So how do you know when you're doing what? That's really important. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, first, we'll start with just the simpler ones, and then we'll graduate to a little more complex so you can see what I mean by that. But not too complex because I cover that in the multi-step equations video. So how I'm going to determine what to do with this if I have no context and no directions, no one's telling me what to do, is I'm going to notice if I have an expression or if I have an equation. Do I have just one thing or do I have a statement of truth about two or more things? So you tell me, Nicole, is this an expression or is this an equation? Now, 
might have confused you with my one thing, two thing. When I say one thing, what I'm counting is uh, expressions. Is it just one expression or is it two equivalent expressions? I want to say it's one. It is. This is just one expression here. And so all I can do is simplify. Now, I kind of want to like preface what I'm saying, all I can do. I mean, I suppose there's other things I can do, but the most normal thing to do, the most requested thing to do, if no one says anything to me, gives me any other directions, what I would do here is perform the indicated operation. I would simplify. I would do the subtraction. So you could go ahead and use your calculator if you need to. Um, but if I have three M's, I have three M's, like having three dollars or three pumpkins. And then I go and I spend six M. Now this is really hard to think about with pumpkins, but it's way easier to think about with dollars. I had three dollars in my bank account and then I went and spent six dollars. What would happen? It would go negative. Nine. I'm going to go negative. Absolutely. I'm negative. Now in the hole, negative how much? I'm starting with $3. Three. And I'm going to spend six. You ready? So I spend one, two, three dollars, and I have no money. I keep spending. I'm spending six, right? So I spent three. Now I'm in negative one, negative two, negative three. And I just spent six dollars. I'm at negative three. Now the good news is even if you hate negatives like most of my students do, you can totally do that with your GED calculator. You cannot put the M's into your calculator. You have to do the algebra, but you can put the coefficients, the numbers in there. So you would just type three minus six. So if you typed three minus six, you better get out negative three or your calculator's broken. But you have to be able to do the algebra. You are adding and subtracting M's. Just like if you're adding and subtracting dollars, you'd still have dollars. If you're adding and subtracting M's, you still have M's. So now I owe somebody in this world three M's. Whatever an M is, I owe them. Okay, so I just simplified. Now let's take a look at something similar. So taking a look at this, is this an expression or is this an equation? Do you see the equal sign? Yes, it's a, an equation. Mm -hmm. Do you see the information on both sides of the equal sign? There's something on either side. It's two-sided. Yes. yes, it's an equation. I can solve it. Because it's an equation, I could actually figure out what m is equal to. On the other side, I couldn't. There was no way to figure it out. So let's try it. If I have 3m equals 6. Okay, this is an equation. I can only solve when something is two-sided because it is the statement of truth that allows me to start solving. So, oh, there it is. I've been looking for my iPad cord this whole time. So I have this statement that 3m is six. There is a number, m, that if I multiply it by three, I will get six. Now, you might know what this number is, but let's still use our algebra skills in order to do it. So I am going to do not what I've been told to do, not multiplication. I'm going to do the opposite. opposite. When we're solving, we do the opposite. What's the opposite of multiplying? Divide. Divide. I am going to go ahead and divide both sides of my equation. Now, notice, before I only did the math once, I subtracted once. When I'm simplifying, it's just one-sided. When I'm solving, I'm doing that work on two sides. Both sides. Yeah. See how I have to have be balanced? That's so that I keep that equal sign true. I want to keep the two sides equivalent. So on this side, multiplying and dividing by three cancel so that my M is alone. And on that side, there's the work to do. Six divided by three is two. And you can see here, when I got an expression, I answered with an expression. When I had an equation, I answered with an equation. Cool. Let's look just a little more complex if we can. Okay. Long, nasty, don't let the X's fool you. That's not how you determine if you're solving or if you're simplifying. You need to decide, is this an expression or is this an equation? I want to say that it's an expression. It is. It's just an expression. There's nothing on the other side. All you can do is obey the symbols, okay? okay? Or all we generally do is, I, I keep correcting myself because sometimes we'll tell you to do weird crap in math class. So read the directions. Don't forget to read directions. But without directions, all I would do is just obey the symbols. So I'm going to come put it over here in the world of simplifying. I mean, there's some multiplication here and there's some squaring, but unfortunately all the multiplication and squaring is with X's. So I can't get any clearer than, you know, four times X is just four X because I don't know what X is. But what I can do is I can do any of the addition or subtraction that I'm able to do. So we learned that in the combining like terms video. Do you see any terms here that will combine? Anything that's like? The 4x and then the negative x. Good. So those are like, and we've always been able to add and subtract the same kinds of things. So if I have four x's and I take one away, now three. I have three x's. Um, these were things adding and subtracting. I don't want to accidentally turn them into multiplication. So I'm going to keep that plus sign in front. So keep it a term. And then there's nothing to combine with my 4x squared so it just drops. Now this is why I think that simplifying algebraic expressions stresses students out so bad. You guys look at 4x squared plus 3x and you think I want you to do something with that. There's nothing to do. <laughs> 
I've done all the operations that I can obey. I can't obey any more of them because there's just, you can't combine unlike terms. So I can't do this addition. Um, there's no way to find out what X is equal to because this is just a single solitary expression. There's nothing on the other side to compare it to. Um, and so I'm done. I'm just done. I just walk away. Done. This is not good for people that have anxiety. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you guys are scared. And I often joke that this is the difference between my A students and my B students. My A students know when to stop. They go home and drink tea. My B <laughs> students are in the room 30 minutes longer than my A students figuring, trying to figure out why they left so early, making up math to please me. You guys are like, oh, there's a plus sign and I got to obey the plus sign and I got to make something up. If I don't know how to do it, there must be a way to do it. There's scratch work all down the paper and you guys are, we're all home sipping tea. No, it can't, no, and it can't be done. And you guys are flapping your arms and trying to fly. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't, when you simplify, a lot of times you're just done. That was all I could combine with these mystery numbers. <laughs> now, uh, obviously part of becoming a guild in the world of math is knowing when to stop. <laughs> That's also, I feel like that's so true to life, Nicole. <laughs> so just a quick question. Mm -hmm. What is that little term called at the top, top, the two? Oh, I keep saying square, square, square. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, the square. This thing. Now, there's two ways to say that. I talked about this in the intro to exponents video when I introduced you to the power of two. Mm -hmm. You can say 4x to the second power, but it takes a long time. Um, and the exponent of two and the exponent of three are really common. So mathematicians often call this by its short name. We call that squaring. So I'll say 4x squared, and it's just shorter than saying 4x to the second power, but it means the same thing. So my head mentally goes to if we were to solve, if that X was not there, mm -hmm. we would say four times four. Oh, uh, yes. But that square is, is not on the four. It's on the X only. So exponents are super duper weak. They only gotcha. work on the number they're directly attached to. Okay. That's what's getting squared. Okay. Whatever okay. X squared is, I have four of them. But I don't know what X squared is because I don't know if X is three. If X was three, X squared would be nine. Uh, but I don't know if maybe X is 11. If X is 11, X squared would be 121. If X is 12, you know, I have no idea what X is. And so I can't tell what I would get if I squared that and multiplied it by four. So I just leave it there. That makes so much more sense because I was thinking that 4X was just its own, but four is timesing by X to the second. By X squared. Mm -hmm. yep. Four is okay. timesing X squared. Mm -hmm. Okay. That just Remember when we learned anxiety. the order of operations, we said you had to deal with exponents before you dealt with multiplication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a thing, x squared, that's getting timed by four. That released my anxiety. I can go back to an A student. Sweet! <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I love my B students. They're the ones working the tails off. My A students usually drive me nuts because I'm like, you're so lazy. Sit down and get smarter. Y'all aren't even willing to dig around and get smarter. So anyway, don't, but. Well, when you see the x's, it's like, okay, 4x is a whole, is a whole. 4x is the thing. And then you're yes. doing some math to that. No, no, no. We so then you're the just like operations. X squared is a thing. And then I'm times something to that. That makes because the whole time I'm like, why can we not do four X times four X? Good. If I wanted to tell you to do four X times four X, I would write it like this. Now that is still an expression. That is still an expression. No equal sign. You see it? It's just one mathematical thing. Uh, but this time I've told you to take the entire group of four X and multiply it by itself. I could simplify this. I could take the entire 4x and multiply it by another 4x. And this is in your next video after combining like terms is, is distribution and it talks about multiplying in the world of algebra. So I'll cover it even though it's a little new to you, okay? Okay. And if I was doing this, I have a four, an X, a four and an X multiplying. That's like four numbers multiplying, right? Because when they're shoved together, four and X are multiplying. So it's like I have four and X and four and X all multiplying. Now we know that we can multiply in any order we want. We, I talk about that a lot in videos. As long as it's all multiplication, it won't matter what order you're going in. You know, two times three is the same as three times two. So I'm gonna just go ahead and group the things that make sense to me. I know how to multiply four and four. Four and four is 16. And I know, even though I don't know what X is, I know a shortcut way to talk about repeated multiplication. X and X multiplying, two X's multiplying, well, I can talk about that using exponents. X squared means the same as two X's multiplying. We learned that on in the intro to exponents lesson. So sometimes you can do the math. Now I'm done. I'm not gonna square this, keep squaring the 16 forever and ever, amen, because the X has been squared. That's why we have to write it that way. So now this square is only on this X. I dealt with the number portion that I could deal with and we're good. So let's look at the things that we're screwing with your head, shall we? Expression or equation. That's 
an equation. That is an equation. I can solve the mystery in this case. I can figure out what X would have to be in order to make this statement. An equation makes a statement. It makes a claim about truth in order to make this statement true. That being said, we said when we were solving, we would work backwards. We would do the opposite. Ooh, and I forgot about something I forgot to put in my Venn diagram. So if you still have your Venn diagram, you should flip back to your notes and put this in your Venn diagram. I apologize for not putting it in. But remember, when we're simplifying, we work Gemma forwards. When we're doing the math, when we're obeying the operations, we work that order of operations forwards. But guess what? When we're being disobedient, when we're doing the opposite of what we've been told, we're using inverses. We're doing exactly the opposite of what we've been told. The order of operations is going to reverse as well. So where we used to deal with the things that were grouped first, we'll solve the things that are grouped last. Where we used to deal with exponents next, you know, exponents, so the order is going to get flipped up. So as I'm solving, I'm actually going to move away anything that's adding or subtracting first. So take a look. Notice that x is not alone this time. This time there's two numbers hanging out. I got a 2 and I got a 17. Now tell me what those numbers are doing. What is 2 doing with x? Multiplying. Multiplying x. That's right. So if I wanted to move that 2 away from x, I'd have to do the opposite of multiplying, dividing. Okay, what is that 17 doing with x? Subtracting. Subtracting. So if I wanted to move that 17, I'd have to do the opposite of subtracting, adding. Now instead of doing math, I'm undoing that. I'm working backwards. So I'm going to work my order of operations backwards. I'm going to move anybody who's adding or subtracting first. So that 17 is going to go first. Now I am solving, girl, and you and I know that solving is two-sided. You better jump across the equal sign and keep your balance. Okay, it's just like a seesaw. That equal sign is what I'm seesawing on, and i got to keep those two sides just perfectly balanced. Okay, so on this side, subtracting 17 and adding 17 will cancel, so that only my 2x is left. And on that side, there's some math to do. 103 plus 17, I believe, is 120. Now I know I'm not done here. How can you tell you're done when you're solving? You're done when the letter is alone. So letter's not alone, so we are going to keep going. Okay, I need to get rid of that too. How could I send that to packing? Divide. Exactly. I can do the opposite. Now I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. Yes. Multiplying and dividing by 2 cancel. I'm left with x and 120 divided by 2 is 60 and I know I'm done. How do I know I'm done? Because the letter's by itself. The letter's by itself on its side of the equation. My answer is an equation. Cool. Okay, did we learn how to visually distinguish? Yes. Okay, so two totally separate playgrounds in math. We have simplifying and we have solving. And if you can't keep those two straight when you're when to do what, you're going to be in one big muddle in algebra. So it is so worth it to practice this skill. I'm going to do one more for you, Nicole, because you were looking at the two and three step video. Um, so I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to show you how we can have problems on the GED that involve both. And I'll do pretty simple ones, but I just want you to see that sometimes both happens. So solving always has an equal? That is such a good question. Do you know like when you're first learning basic sentences, you learn to write is and am sentences? The dog is blue. Yes. He's not blue. The dog is brown. The dog is fluffy. The dog is, and it's kind of boring, but it's the first verb you learn. Equal signs are like that. That side is the same as that side. It's kind of boring, but it's the first statement we learned of. On the GED, they have both equations that you can solve and they have inequalities, but it's still two-sided. So just to answer her glorious question, Sorry. I'll look at an example of something we could solve that's not an equation. Kate hates my questions. No, I love your questions. <laughs> You're asking what everybody wants to know, seriously. I knew it wasn't gonna be that easy. <laughs> no, but this is a middle level video. I get to this by the last video in the series that you're on, solving inequalities. But since you asked, I might as well talk about it because it's the exact same skills. Okay. But I want you to see here, I don't have an equal sign this time. Can you see that? It's an inequality symbol. It's not saying the two sides are equal this time, but it's still making a statement of relationship between the two sides. It's still like a mathematical verb. What this one says, is that the left-hand side is greater than or equal to the right-hand side. This happens in the real world when we say things like, I need to make at least this much money. You'd be cool if you made more. <laughs> <laughs> or I, I'm going to the store and I can't spend more than $100. 
you could spend a hundred, but if you spent more, you'd be in big trouble. So it's still a relationship between two things. You're spending in the hundred bucks, but it's, it doesn't have to be perfectly equal. Okay. So, but notice, notice that it's still two sided. I still have a relationship between two different expressions. So if I was looking at something like this, I would still have the power to solve it. So let's go ahead and do it. Since she brought it up, why not you guys? It's definitely all over the freaking GED. They love you to love to make you solve inequalities. And the the rules of solving are the rules of solving. I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to you. The other side. Both sides. There's only one big difference between inequalities and equations, and it's not going to come up on this particular problem. Check out my inequality videos if you want to know it. But all the rules of solving will stay the same. It's just an additional principle to know. Okay, so we're going to follow the rules of solving. I want to get this X alone. Right now, there are a lot of things, a couple of numbers on its side. I've got to get rid of a three and I've got to get rid of an 11. Now we said when you're solving, you should follow the order of operations backwards. So I need to move anything that's adding or subtracting first. What shall I move away? The 11, you would add 11. The 11 is subtracting. I will move him away through? Addition. Addition. Now again, I'm still solving. It might not be an equal sign, but I, it's still two-sided and I'm trying to keep my balance. I made a change. Uh, and so I will do that change on both sides. Okay, on this side, subtracting 11 and adding 11 cancel. I'm left with just x over 3. Now I haven't done anything to change my inequality sign, so it'll just remain. You could add 11 to both sides. To, like, I could have more money than you, okay? Let's say Kate has more money than Nicole. If you give us both $11, well, guess what? I will still have more money than Nicole. So I haven't changed that relationship. So that relationship will stay the same. And then now on this side, 15 plus 11, of course, is 26. Now notice, Nicole, that letter is still not alone, is he? There is a number hanging out. What number is hanging out? The three. How could I send the three packing? By multiplying. By multiplying. It's currently dividing. I do the opposite to get rid of crap. The opposite of divide is multiply. I'm going to take a different colored pen so you guys can see it in your notes, and I'm going to multiply this entire side by three. Remember to use parentheses when you multiply, um, or you will mess up some of the multi-step problems on the GED. I can do whatever I want to an uh, equation and inequality when I have the statement of truth as long as I keep my balance. So whatever I did to that left hand side, I need to reach over and do to my right hand side as well. Uh, so I multiply both sides by three. Okay, let's take a look at what will happen. What will my new inequality be? So multiplying and dividing by three cancel. X is that. And once again, I've done nothing to change my inequality. If I have more money than you, and then we both triple our money, I'll still have more money than you. And that's what I did. I multiplied both sides by three, but I kept the relationship the same. Okay. And so that math I can do on the other side, let's see. 26 times 3 is 60 and 18, 78. You should check me because I'm getting a little you. tired of getting trolled on the internet. Apparently I'm becoming a big deal because people are trolling me. And I got told F you twice yesterday. What? Hey, so, yeah, you can defend me for me. No, somebody didn't like my math methods. They said I over-explained. Students don't need to understand this much, Nicole. <laughs> people like me need over-explaining. <laughs> it's okay. Everybody's got an opinion, right? And everybody wants to blast it on the internet. But let's right. look at this. X is greater than or equal to 78. Notice that I started with something two-sided. I ended with something two-sided. But this time I started with an inequality. I ended with an inequality. So Nicole asked a great question. Can I only solve when it's an equation? No, there's other kinds of statements that we will learn to make in math that could also be solved. But it would have to be there would have to be a relationship between expressions in order to solve. Okay, so let's look at some problems that fool students. Okay, let's see. Uh, would they try to trick me, Kate? Does this hard and fast rule work every time, Kate? I know your shenanigans and I don't want you to oversimplify things. So let's take a look at something like this. Sometimes when you are plugging into things, you get some interesting statements. So let's look at one. Now this is very interesting because is this an expression or is this an equation? An equation. It is an equation. You're right. There's an expression on the left-hand side that's set equal to an expression on the right-hand side. It's definitely an equation. But what I have to say about this equation is it's already solved. Well, could I solve it? Well, yeah, but it's already solved. What do I mean when I say it's already solved? We told you that you were done solving. I kept saying again and again, Nicole, you know you're done solving when the letter is alone. Take a look at this. Oh, oh this sucker solved for A. Do you see that? I the letter A is already alone. So there's no solving to do. But I just would like to remind you, when we talked about what an equation was, we said an equation was two equivalent 
expressions. So solving is what we think of when we're like moving back and forth across that equal sign. We don't need to do any of that. But you can notice, take a look at my right hand side there. The right hand side by itself is a single solitary expression. There is some forwards math I can do over there. You might say, Kate, I hate fractions. Well, your calculator doesn't hate fractions. And these are all numbers over there. One half, eight, 15. You could totally just type that entire expression into your calculator and see what it comes to. So even though you can't, you don't need to solve this, it's already solved, you could still simplify the right-hand side to find out exactly what A is equal to. And when I put all these things together in my calculator, uh, one half times eight times 15 came to 60. So both of these equations are solved, A is alone, but A, A is equal to 60 is way simpler. I simplified the right-hand side. And there will be times in math that it's an equation, but you're all you have, it's already solved, so all you have to do is simplify an expression. Cool. Now, I told you that the hardest it can get on the GED is if I have both solving and simplifying in the same problem. That sounds scary. And this, I go into tons of detail and do tons of a practice on this in the solving multi-step equations, okay? So don't worry, you'll get lots of practice with this, but I just want to give you a little foresight to, is it simplifying or solving? And sometimes I go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> So this is not quite as complex as it'll get on the GED. Um, like I said, go check out the Solving Multi-Step Equations video after, in order, of course, Nicole. Uh, but let's just look at how simplifying and solving could come up. Now remember, an equation is two expressions set equal to each other. So you can simplify expressions. So you can treat the left-hand side and the right-hand side like the totally separate expressions they are and do any forwards obeying of the symbols that you know how to do. So like I know how to combine 2x and 4x. They're on the same side of the equal sign. I could just put them together. Okay, what is 2x plus 4x? 6x. 6x. Now notice, because I was simplifying, I was obeying, I just did it on one side. There's no 6x on my other side. But on the other side, there's a totally separate expression. Yeah. And it has some things I know how to do there. I can simplify the right-hand side as well. Now, when we're simplifying, that's when we do the order of operations this way. So let me just give you your little Gemma. Simplify that way and solve that way. So I'm simplifying right now. So what should I do first, the subtraction or the exponent? The exponent. Absolutely. So 11 squared, 11 times 11 is 121. I'll drop down whatever I haven't used. I haven't used the minus 7. And you can see I still have some simplifying I could do on this. On the right-hand side, I could still simplify, right? Uh, so 121 minus 7 is... 114. Now there's no more simplifying to do on the left hand side, so I'm just going to drop it. And now I am done simplifying. The left hand side is as simple as it's going to get. The right hand side is as simple as it's going to get. It's time to start that process of isolating the variable, working to get it alone. Okay, wonderful. How could I isolate x? How could I get x alone? You would divide. Exactly. Divide now I'm solving. So now I jump across the equal sign and do it to both sides. I'm making a change. I'm not being obedient. I'm being disobedient. I do it to both sides. Okay, wonderful. I wish I had left myself enough space to write directly underneath. I apologize to the entire internet because actually going sideways in algebra really screws you up. So let me just write this down. 6x is equal to 114 is what I had. And hopefully you have room on your notes to go directly down. I divided both sides by 6 and let's see what happens. Multiplying and dividing by 6 cancel. So my x is alone and there's my math to do. 114 divided by 6. 19. You deal with each expression separately as you go and do that divide by six on both sides. And now I'm done. My X is alone. My numbers are, every operation I could perform, every bit of simplification I could do is done. And it's beautiful. For the GED, even though it's a little scary, we've got to visually know when we're simplifying and when we're solving. And we have to be able to handle both in the same problem. And so that's what you'll look forward to doing in, in solving multi-step equations. Do you have any more questions? No, but I thought I was going to get scared at the end of there because the 6x equal 1. 14, I thought you were going to say, that's all we can do. And I'm like, no, don't do it. <laughs> my anxiety yeah. started rising. So I'm like, oh my gosh, there's if, one more step. If it was here, if I had something like this with no equal sign, I would have to stop there. I don't have a statement. There's nothing else I could do. But in this case, with that equal sign, I did have the power to solve and finally figure out what X was equal to. Cool. Okay. Great. Any other questions about this? Can I change your problem? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Okay. So if we did 2X plus 7 equals 11 squared plus 4X. 4X? Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, so same basic rule applies. Now, Nicole, this is a wisdom principle, not a hard and fast rule. Okay. So it's not like you'd be wrong if you did it another way. You would just be more likely to get confused. But I like to simplify anything I can simplify before I start solving. So take a look at your left hand side. Ignore this right hand side completely. Is there any math you know how to do over there? There's nothing. We can nope. You're right. Do. No simplifying can be done. But I can never jump across that equal sign to get that. To form. simplify. Exactly. Okay. Cool. You have to use inverses to get across an equal sign. Think of it like the wall you can't climb without an inverse. The gotcha. inverse is your ladder. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now let's look at that right hand side. Is there any simplifying, any forwards math you know how to do? It would be 11 squared. Yes, I can do that. 121. Now there's nothing else I can do with this uh, plus 4x. So I'll just drop it. And again, we said that that work on the left hand side couldn't simplify. So it'll just drop. And that's our final answer. It's not actually, there's just something uh, I haven't oh. taught you yet. So, but it oh. is as simplified as it's going to get. It is time to start okay. solving. But I have a problem and you probably already spotted it because you're really a observant. It's like, how can I get the letter alone if there's a letter on both sides? There's an X on the left but, and an X on the right. Do you see that, Nicole? I do. And just to throw it out there, would this go back I when just, we were talking about using so far, the S, would it mean the same thing? The X's in that equation would mean the same thing? Yes. The X's on the left-hand side are the same as the X's on the right-hand side. I'm not going to suddenly introduce X and have it mean something else. Whatever okay. number it is, it's consistent. So I have some of them on the left and I have some of them on the right. But I told you, you cannot bridge that equal sign. You may not jump that equal sign without using inverse operations. I want to jump, but I didn't know if I was able to jump. Yeah, we can jump the equal sign, but we can only jump the equal sign by doing the opposites. But some students screw up what the opposite is. Let me show you what I mean. Students are used to when four and X are shoved together, we say, well, four is multiplying. So I want to divide away the four. Okay, but that was the work we did to separate the four from the X to break that bond. Instead of separating the four from the X right now, what I'd like to do is take the entire X term, get all the X terms together. And so what I think I'll do is I think I'll move this one right here. I want to take this entire X term, not just the two. I don't want to break up the two and the X. I want to take the entire two X. We'll take a look at this entire two X. Can you see this is a term? This is something adding with seven. I am going to subtract two X. I don't want to just take the two. I'm not dividing away a two. I am taking the whole two X. I'm subtracting that whole thing away. Are you cool with that? I don't because of the, the term behind it, the two X, that's what you would use. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to zero out. Like two X, whatever it is, if I subtract it out, it'll zero out. It won't be there anymore. Okay, it's already a positive two, so. Yeah, so I'm taking away two X's. It's a positive two okay. X, so I'm gonna subtract two X, so it'll cancel out. Now I can do whatever gotcha. I want, as long as I do it to both sides. Okay. So this is the new math that shows up in your solving multi-step equation videos, moving over whole X terms. We've never moved X before. We've always kept X steady and moved all the numbers. But what students don't realize is they could take an X, why not? I'm gonna take, subtract out that whole two X. Now it works as long as I do it to both sides. Now let's see what our new equation will be. On the left-hand side, if I had two X, but then I took them away, that's zeroed out. I have nothing, but there's still that seven there. Nothing plus seven, of course, is just seven. Okay, and then on the right-hand side, 121 hasn't been changed, but uh, I had four X's there and now I'm taking away two X's. So if I take away two X's from four X's, I'll have how many? Two. Exactly. And I need that uh, plus sign in front, positive two X, so that it remains a term. And now that the X's are on the same side, well, we could surely work to get X alone now. Now got that I got the X's to the same side, I can move my numbers away. So the three basic wisdom principles of solving linear equations, and again, I'm going to outline this in the multi-step equations, are simplify each expression first, the left and the right hand side, and it's really solving linear equations or inequalities. It's the same basic process. So simplify the left hand side and the right hand side. Uh, then after you're done with that, if you need to get the letters to the same side, and that's always moving the whole term, so it's through addition or subtraction, and then you can work to isolate the variables. You can move the numbers away. So you can see here that my x is over here on this right hand side, and I want to get the numbers away. Now there's two numbers hanging out with x. There's a 121 and a 2. I want 
want to move them both. Which should go first? Yeah, we would do it backwards, right? Yeah, we're solving. Okay, so addition. Yeah, this 121 is a term. It's adding or subtracting with X. So I'm going to move it first. I'll do that from both sides. If I take away the 121, that zeroes out. And 0 plus 2X, of course, is just the 2X. And 7 minus 121 is gross. <laughs> It's a negative 114. Okay, and you all saw me all pick up my TI. That's what I did to get that. I mean, I can add and subtract negatives in my head, but when I'm focused this hard on algebra, I don't want to make a stupid mistake. Now, I'm not done. How do I know I'm not done, Nicole? Because the X is not by itself. The X is not by itself. I need to send that to packing. How could I send that to packing? By dividing it, the two. That's absolutely right. I'll divide away the two. Now, I'm solving. I'm undoing math. So I made a change. So I need to do it to both yes, sides to keep my balance. Okay, on this side, multiplying and dividing by two cancel. My X is alone. On that side, there's the math to do. Negative 114 divided by two is, of course, 50, negative 57. And I say, of course, like I did in my head instead of my TI. <laughs> and now I'm done. How do I know I'm done, Nicole? Because the variable is by itself. There it goes. Now, the only way this gets complex in later math is sometimes it gets hard to get the letter alone and you need some more nifty tricks. But algebra is algebra is algebra. You're either simplifying, you're obeying operations, or you're solving, you're working to get her a letter alone. And those are our two big things that we do. I'll, I'll give you more tricks and tricks and tricks as math progresses. You'll learn how to solve and simplify grosser and grosser things, but I'm usually simplifying or solving. This is wonderful. This is the most brilliant thing we've ever done, Nicole. I'm so proud of us. <laughs> it's hard um, with algebra. It really is because it's so abstract. It really is. We know X is a number, but it's real hard to conceive of. I mean, all the things I can do with X are because X is a number. He's going to behave like a number does, but it's just theoretical instead of concrete. So it can be really hard for students to grasp. So guys, you know what I always say, if you don't practice it, you're not going to remember it come test time. You know, everything's easy for the math teacher, and it always sounds simple when I'm sitting there explaining it to you, uh, but super important that you practice it and you review it so you have a test-taking knowledge. So this is the Quizlet set that I created in order to let you guys practice this skill, and I just want to let you in on a few little weird things with Quizlet. So, like, if you were going to do this problem, I'd, you know, I'd go ahead and write down uh, my problem. 14 equals 6 plus x, and I would see, oh, this is an equation I can solve at. I can work to get x alone. Subtracting 6 from both sides, I would very quickly figure out that um, uh, what I have written down is 8 is equal to x. And if you're solving equations the way I taught you, that's what your answer would have too. But Quizlet's a little dumb. If I put that in, Quizlet will say, say you said 8 is equal to x, but the correct answer is x is equal to 8. Now this won't happen on the GED. The GED will be multiple choice, so you'll be able to see your answer there, or else it, you would just be typing in the number. The x equals would already be on the screen. So you won't have to worry about this happening on the GED. But if this happens to you on Quizlet, go ahead and look at this little button on the right. It says override. I was right. It's super important that you can tell when things mean the same thing in math. If you were right, just use the override I was right button. Now, on the other hand, if you do something wrong and you get it totally wrong, like a common wrong error answer for this is 25, uh, you wouldn't want to mark that you were right there. You would want to just press any key to continue, like it says. So Quizlet will keep track of the ones you got incorrect and correct. If you were to finish this whole list, this whole set, and by me, all means, you do not have to. It's 112 problems. But if you were to finish this entire set, um, you could come back and look at just the ones you got wrong. And that can be super helpful because you might start noticing patterns that will help you see your weaknesses and in the future do better. All right. Happy learning.